The production flow mechanism of the theory of constraints is called the drum buffer rope. It is briefly described in the best-selling novel, The Goal, uh, but it, because it's a novel format, it's not really very clear about how it actually works. In fact, some of the bits are, are missing or hardly explained at all. So let me give you a, a, a formal description of what this is. Um, the drum. Uh, the drum is how you schedule uh, the constraint, the bottleneck, whether you're talking about day-to-day -day scheduling or, in fact, long-term planning, right? It is the heart, of course, of the system, uh, since we're talking about theory of constraints. Um, so you will decide, depending on your order book and all your forecasts, how you're going to use uh, the bottleneck and schedule it accordingly. Okay. Once you've done that, uh, you're going to uh, implement the rope. The rope is there to pull the material into the factory, into the system, uh, depending on what the uh, constraint is going to do and is capable of doing, so that you don't flood uh, the beginning of the flow by launching work uh, into the system that the capacity constraint won't be able to digest. Right? You don't want to aim for full utilization of non-bottlenecks, of course. Okay. So if you do that, you have a, a system with a minimum inventory and maximum throughput, but you haven't protected it against uncertainties, variabilities. And so this is where the buffer comes in, right? Um, the buffer is described in, in time, uh, and uh, you try and get uh, work, work orders to arrive in front of your capacity constraint with a certain amount of uh, time ahead of when it's planned on the uh, bottleneck, uh, an hour or a day, depending on your industrial system, okay? And it will absorb uncertainties and variabilities and problems uh, in the flow before the bottleneck, right? So that can be breakdowns, absenteeism, quality problems. But also, importantly, uh, it will absorb uh, overloads on non-bottlenecks because even though a non-bottleneck by definition has excess capacity, it can have too much work for an hour, for a day or whatever, right? And end up with three different work orders to work on, right? Um, so all those variabilities are taken into account and that manages, that enables you to make sure that the bottleneck never stops, right? Because one of the rules of the theory of constraints is... Uh, an hour lost on a bottleneck is an hour loss for the system. Okay, so if you do that, you have a system with minimum working progress and maximum sales, but you haven't yet ensured a proper due date performance. That's where the last buffer comes in, the second buffer, which is just at the end of the process, and it is there to absorb any problems you might have between the bottleneck and uh, the last operation. Okay, so if you do that, you have a very simple but powerful system with maximum sales, minimum inventory, and 100% due date performance, right? Some people say drum buffer rope is so good, it's kind of dangerous because you can get good performance out of a bad factory. Anyway, let me just conclude by underlining the buffer, uh, because I think this is something that's not always well understood about the theory of constraints, maybe because of its name. The full name of the theory of constraints could have been the theory of constraints and the management of variability and uncertainty, right? And you can see it here with the buffer. You see it even more in uh, project management and in critical chain. Um, but that's something that's sometimes not well understood about the theory of constraints. Thank you.